computational geometry. So computational geometry is branch of computer science that studies the algorithm solving geometric problems. So which are the application areas? Application areas are computer graphics, robotics, LSI design, CAD, molecular modeling, metallurgy, these are the application areas, okay? And there are other various areas this computational geometry is used. So geometry normally in case of the 10 plus 2 mathematics you learned about this state lines and all this right state line so x1 y1 x2 y2 know how to create the equations and you can also find uh, you can find whether these two lines intersecting each other or not yes or no students so you use parametric forms to learn but normally also you can directly find what is the intersection and all whether these two lines are intersecting or not but here in computational geometry not yet started what i'll do in computational geometry the first thing that we are going to learn is not straight line but which is bit like straight line is called line segment okay so line segments so first you have to understand what is line segment so there is a difference between line straight line and line segment what is the difference so in this case when you are talking about line segment this is bit like plane okay so earlier we were discussing in 10 plus 2 whether two lines intersecting each other or not now here we will be discussing whether two line segments intersecting each other or not which is different completely because line segment is bit like plane okay let's say two planes are intersecting each other like so if you want to find whether two lines two plane planes are intersecting each other or not your techniques will be different not this coordinate geometry that you learned in 10 plus 2 it will be slightly different the line segment so we are calling it line segment so several computational geometry algorithm in this chapter requires answer so basically line segment intersection we learn first so in this unit we are going to learn three algorithms basically first one is line segment intersection how two line segments are intersecting each other based on that we will find, we will learn another algorithm which is called Graham scan. Graham scan algorithm, okay. This algorithm, what happens? Tell me anything you want to add. Graham scan algorithm for finding convex hull. I will tell you what is convex hull. As this unit says that we will be learning different type of geometric problem. The convex hull is a geometric problem. How to find a convex hull? It is a big deal. Similarly, third algorithm is Jarvis March algorithm. Jarvis March, which also find the convex hull. Okay. So finding convex hull is first thing. But initially, we'll learn how these line segments intersect each other. So you understood what is line segments? Not straight line, but plane. Two planes are intersecting each other something like that so the representation also will change okay so if you see the representation so given two points given two distinct points p1 and p2 the line segment is p1 p2 so two points of there p1 and p2 we'll call line segment p1 p2 line segment Sometimes the ordering of P1 and P2 matters. We speak of directed segment. Now let's say if it has direction, then this will be changed. Like instead of P1, P2, we'll just like the direction. Okay, this direction will be there. Why this direction is important? Because when you are going to find whether two lines, two segments are intersecting each other or not, that time directions are important. You have to calculate the direction. Which directions in line segments are rotating? Is it right direction or left direction? That will come later on, but you have to understand the directions. With the direction only, you can find the whether the in segments are intersecting each other or not. 
so first is line segment then if it is a direct direction is there means we will call directed segment so in this case i will call it p1 p2 let's say this is the this is p1 this is p2 and it has a direction like this we will call p1 p2 the directed line segment okay if p1 is the origin let's say this is 0 0 then we can treat the directed segment p1 p2 as a vector of p2 this will be simply written as p2 vector p2 okay and in this section we explore the following question first given two directed segment p0 p1 and p0 p2 like something like this the, let's say p0 p1 and p0 p2 two segments are there is p0 p1 clockwise from p0 p2 with respect to their common endpoints p0 p0 p1 is clockwise we have to calculate this or is it anti-clockwise so in this case clock normally which direction is this direction only so if it is clockwise means it's clockwise we will say that p0 p1 is clockwise compared to p0 p2 but if it is like this p0 p1 and then here p0 p2 then we'll say anti-clockwise counter clockwise or anti so this is clockwise this is anti-clockwise okay these two things we have to be careful now given to line segment p0 p1 and p1 p2 we traverse p0 p1 and then p1 p2 we make a left turn what it tries to say very simple first p0 p1 let's say p0 p1 and p1 p2 let's say p1 p2 so initially your direction is this then your direction is this okay so in this case we'll what we'll call we'll call that if we traverse p0 p1 and then p1 p2 this is p1 p2 let's say or let's say no direction is there simply you are moving like this once first we traverse this and then we are traversing this like this then we'll call we do make a left turn at point p1 this is a left turn okay okay fine given to line segments p0 p1 and p1 p2 if, if we traverse p0 p1 as it is done left turn do line segment p1 p2 and p3 p4 intersects now given two line segments let's say p1 p2 like this and let's say p3 p4 whether they intersect each other or not based on this rotation right direction left direction because if it is this, if p2 would have come here instead of going that side so then direction would be this side correct so which direction this segments are moving based on that whether can we decide whether p2 p1 p1 p2 and p3 p3 p4 intersect each other that means whether these two guys two step two line segments intersect each other or not whether two line segments intersect each other or not that is what the question mark is that, that is what the algorithm we are going to learn now fine understood or not any doubt so how to do that to understood that rotation plays an important role which direction it is rotating so first thing is that cross product we have to find the cross product okay cross product because direction is there so cross product will come into the picture so Computing cross product lies at the heart of line segment methods. Consider vector P1 and P2. Okay, just now I showed you in figure 33.1. So 33.1 means which one? 33.1 means this one. Here, P0, P1, through P2. If this is the case. We can interpret cross product P1, P2, the signed area of the parallelogram is a signed area. Okay. Found by the point 0, 0, then P1, then P2, then P1 plus P2. So it could be 0, 0. This is x1, y1. Let's say this is x2, y2. So this will be what? This will be how much? x1, uh, this is like, this is, uh, let's say this is x1, y1. So this is what? x, x1. And then further this is like i don't know p2 so if this multiplication p1 into p2 that means we are considering this line segment and this line segment p1 into p2 which is nothing but determinant of 
x1 y1 is the coordinate of p1 x2 y2 is the coordinate of p2 if this determinant comes negative so you have to be careful here okay if p1 p2 is positive then p1 is clockwise from p2 the determinant come positive then p1 clockwise means this side right let's say this p1 p2 and then you have 0 0 and then you have the coordinate for p1 p2 after getting determinant you are getting some negative value let's say minus 30 or something whatever if it is negative then it will be counterclockwise p2 will be counterclockwise from p p2 will be counterclockwise from p counterclockwise if it is positive then p2 will be clockwise that means situation will be somewhat different this is p0 this is p1 here is p clockwise correct clockwise and anti clockwise counter clock is understood okay so this is the situation so to determine whether directed segment p0 p1 is closer to directed segment p1 p2 the clockwise direction in the counter clockwise direction with respect to the common endpoint p0 we simply translate into p0 so this is what you have to calculate this cross product every time you have to calculate the cross product okay this cross product you have to fine if cross product is negative we will say that P2 is counterclockwise, this cross product is positive. Then we will say P1 is counterclockwise from P1 is counterclockwise. Fine. So this is the situation we have with respect to P0 we are calculating. So in this case, what we will say? P2 is clockwise or P2 is clockwise from P2 or anti-clockwise? Anti-clockwise, correct? What about this one? P2 is clockwise. That means anti clockwise means which one positive or negative? Clockwise positive. So this is just a scenario, very easy, huh? Just that you have to your y0 means 0, 0. If you think that origin at origin at 0, 0, then x0 will be somewhere, otherwise you know origin shift happens. So x0 could be any value. Okay. But if it is 0, 0, then x0 will be 0, y0 will be 0. You start from origin, but normally it never happens. Okay. Done. Now we will directly go to the algorithm, okay? The algorithm of line segment intersection. <coughs> Up to this much, it is clear or not? Now let's go to the actual algorithm line segment. How the things will happen. Okay? So here what is happening? We have two line segments, P1, P2 and P3, P4. P1, P2 and P2, P4, P3, P4. Okay. Now we have to decide whether these two line segments intersect each other or not. So there are three conditions, four conditions for that. Okay. First condition is that the segment P1, P2, this one, this one, actually this, this figure, segment P1, P2 and P3, P4 straddles each other lines. In this case, actually in the figure it is straddling, that means they are crossing each other. Because, let's assume it has crossed. Because P3, P4, P3, P4, this one, straddles the line containing P1, P2. The sign of the cross product, P3 minus P1, P2 minus P1. That means with respect to P1, with respect to P1, this, you see here, P3, P4 straddles the line containing P1, P2, the sign of the cross product, P3 minus P1 and P2 minus P1, and P4 minus P1 and P2 minus P1. That means, these two points they are targeting this point and this point, what they are trying to say, their signs are different. That means their cross product has different sign. That means cross product one is positive, one is negative. Okay? Cross product differs. That means one has gone this direction, another has gone this direction. That's true. So this cross product sign, that means it, if it is positive, this must be negative. So only 
if one with respect to a point you are calculating if this goes this side and this goes this side generally you can say that this this and this has intersected each other okay this and this respect to p1 this has gone this side this one was this so that's what happening in the first case which is the best case scenario okay so with respect to p1 p4 this i'm talking about and this is p3 they are saying that it has this segment this segment has gone this side rotation is this side this segment rotation is this side that's why they are crossing each other this is the first case scenario second case scenario let's see okay this is done second case so you understood p1 minus p3 p4 minus p3 so this differs p1 p2 that is the line p3 p4 the signs of the cross product of this and this differs and what about this one this is somewhat typical you see this segment p1 p2 p1 p2 is like this p1 p2 this is one segment and this another segment is like this p3 this i am talking about this figure okay this figure p3 p4 correct no so they have they crossed each other have they crossed this is one segment this is another segment have they crossed no no they haven't crossed okay so what it says p3 p4 straddles the line containing p1 p2 but p1 p2 doesn't does not straddle the line containing p3 p4 the sign of the cross product this and this are the same so sign of the cross product of p1 p3 sign of the cross product of uh, p3 which is p3, this one this is p3 with respect to this p1 and with respect to this p4 their direction is like this same sign either this or this because their signs are same so they haven't crossed each other so this is the second case if this hasn't crossed with respect to this this segment if this segment is this side this guy when you cal will calculate the cross product this also this side or maybe this side and this side both the same side rotation is happening how they will cross only they can cross if this happen this side this happen this side then only cross product happens, crossing, the straddle happening. Otherwise, in other circumstances, this is not going to happen because this fellow has come this much and this segment is gone up to this much. So there is a gap between that. So they are not crossing each other. So this, so this is the situation. Okay. So if you consider P3, you see here, you see here P3, P3, this, P3, this, this is negative. P3, this, P3, this, this is also negative. With respect to P1, P4, respect to P1, P4, this is also negative. With respect to P2, P4, why is P2? P2, P4, this also. That means both of them rotating negative, negative. Both are negative, negative. Okay? So it's not possible. So this is also a case where the, 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 the sign, that means the both are negative, both are positive. If that happens, then there is no choice. Actually, they will be like parallel, you can consider them parallel or rotations are same same direction rotations are happening okay this is not done this fellow which is c point p3 is collinear so this guy has come up to this much but it has stopped here and this is another segment line segment this is also not this is this is actually straddling but this the, the remaining part of this p3 p4 hasn't come this side it has only stopped here right It has stopped up to this much. It hasn't. It hasn't actually straddled. That means it has to come this side. No, generally these two segment will be intersecting each other. Not a proper straddling, but it has come up to this much and it is collinear. This is another condition. Collinear. So that means these two line segments is not properly inter intersecting, but the points are collinear. You can call it intersect, but not a true intersect. Okay, this is done. This is also another case, case number four, which is of 
point P3 is collinear with P1, P2. So here you see if this P2 comes further, it will match P3. But here also if they are not straddling each other. So in this case also you will find that what will happen to here? Here the determinant is zero in there because because one of the points are collinear, so the determinant will be zero. Okay, determinant will be zero here. But in this case of the same thing happened like this. Both will be positive, both will be negative. They are not straddling each other, okay? So this is called line segment intersection, okay? Now if you see the algorithm, this is the algorithm, okay? This is the algorithm. Segment intersects. So first, we are calculating D1 direction. So what it writes that, the, the following algorithm implement this idea segment intersect returns true if segment p1 p2 and p3 p4 intersects it returns true otherwise it is false it calls subroutine direction which computes relative orientation is in the cross product so that very simple d1 is this d2 is this so these two fellow will segment each other if the if d1 is positive d2 is negative direction similarly all direction will happen like that so they will return true if one is positive, another is negative. One is positive, another is negative. One positive, another is negative. Then in this case, it will return true. Otherwise, if it is one of the determinant is zero, it will like a collinear case will happen here. I think so. On segment, on segment. Okay. This also on segment. This also on segment. This also on segment. This is the third case. So on segment case is this one. On segment case is this one. This is the on segment case. Okay. This is the directions are all different different. This is the proper case, this is on segment case. And what about the others? Like in this case, what will happen? So here, okay. On segment case, we have to just clarify that that what do we have to clarify? We have to clarify that this P3, which is let's say PK, is in between P I and PJ. That is what they are doing here. On segment, they are just checking whether this thing is in between or not okay correct one segment xk should be in between xi and xj right and remaining all cases it will be false if it is zero then it is false okay remaining if the directions all directions are different different then they will enter so that means line number five is playing an important role here where case one is reflected, that means two, then this case is happening. Where one is happening. Correct. And on segment case is happening. If any of the determinant is zero, on segment is happening. This is all line number seven, eight, on segment is happening. Okay. That means this one, on segment. Yes. Okay. On segment. Does that PK should be in between P1, P2? That is what you have to clarify. And remaining cases, it will be false. Else return false. Is the case of this false? It's also false. Achha, here, uh, I think uh, on segment might happen, but in here, what is happening? P1, P2. If you extend this P2 further, it will come to P3. There will be a chance of crossing each other. But then, that case you will be having this one see that's why they are finding the minimum of x comma j and maximum of x comma j xk should be in between so in this case this condition i think false xk should be minimum of x comma j and should be should be greater than x comma minimum of this should be less than maximum of this so in that case it is not happening maximum of this is not happening here it is false so this is the algorithm line segment intersection Time complexity, you see, you can have time complexity. How much time? So, today, new topic finding convex hull. Okay, convex. So, what is convex hull? So, the convex hull of a set Q of points denoted by this is the smallest convex polygon P for which each point in Q is either on the boundary of P or in its interior meaning is let's say we have a map here yeah, map the convex cell is something which 
how much you can get maximum area from this India map. Let's say if you say that sir, this is the maximum area that I can I can uh, draw. Okay. So in between, but the problem is that these points, these points are outside of Indian map. So this won't be a convex hull. So you have to draw such a way that it should be inside like this. Not even this. It should be inside yet it will occupy the maximum area. So if you, if you draw like this, let's say here one point and here one point. Then this, this, this will be inner area will be a convex hull. But if you go out of the map and then say this is the maximum area I can get. This is not a convex hull because these points are outside of Indian map. Okay. Now the definition what it says smallest convex polygon P for which each point in Q is either on the boundary, either on the Indian map boundary here or it is interior, not exterior. Okay. That is called convex hull. Fine. And we implicitly assume that all points in the set Q are unique and that Q contains at least three points which are not collinear. Okay, so this is another condition. We implicitly assume that all points in the set Q are, are unique, that Q contains at least three points which are not collinear. At least three points which are not collinear. That means if you pick any three points, they should not be collinear. That, that is what it tries to say. Anyway, this is not an important uh, point. Important point is that given such kind of point, given such kind of points here, you have to find the convex hull. So if you see the so finding convex hull, there are different different methods. We can compute convex hull O n log n time by any of the several methods. That means there is not, not only one method, many methods by which you can calculate the convex hull. The first algorithm that you are going to discuss, Graham scan. Graham scan. So today we are going to discuss Graham scan algorithm, okay? So both the algorithms that we are going to discuss, the first algorithm that you are going to discuss is Graham scan. Second algorithm we are going to discuss is Jarvis Smart. J R V I C A Jarvis March. So these two algorithms will apply for finding convex hull. Okay. I think uh, at least this gram scan takes both the algorithm takes I think O n log n time. Okay. And there are other methods which follows incremental method, divide and conquer strategy, prune and search method. Okay. Now let us directly go to the algorithm itself. So what Gram scan does? What I'll do? First of all, you're going to find convex hull. So what it does? Let P0 be the point in Q. This all points that is given to you is nothing but a set of points Q, where you have, let's say, P0 to P12. 12 points are there, okay? So P0 be the point in Q with the minimum y coordinate or the leftmost such point in case of type. So this is a P0. So basically what is happening, lot of points are given to you like this. So you can draw it. Let's say this is for the easiness purpose. This is x axis, this is y axis. Okay. What you have to find, you have to find the minimum y coordinate point, which is the minimum y coordinate that you have to find. So you can see that minimum y coordinate is this one. Minimum y, y value. Okay. This point you have to choose minimum y value, but there is a catch. What is a catch? If there are more than one y value, that means the same length, let's say another y, another point is here, another point is here. Then what you will do? You will choose the leftmost such point in case of tie. So basically I have three points here, this, this and this. If this is the situation, y coordinate is same, y coordinate is same, y coordinate is same. We will be choosing the leftmost voila, that means this one leftmost leftmost y coordinate okay understood students 
these are the point this leftmost we will be choosing this is the first condition second one is what so y coordinate is done how to choose p0 that you understood that means minimum y coordinate will be p0 first point p0 second line number two let p0 p2 and pm be the remaining points in q that means here you have chosen p0 this is done and the remaining points are these all these points are remaining points that means from p1 to p12 p1 to p12 be the remaining points plotted by polar angle so another thing you have to do before starting this algorithm the all points that will be given to you you have to nomenclature them using polar angle wise so polar angle is very simple normal angle normal angle is polar angle so let's say this is my first polar angle point this is my second polar angle point this is my third polar angle point like that whichever comes polar angle wise that you have to choose correct friends so polar angle this is the first this is the second point this is the third point like that you have to choose polar angle wise so basically you have to nomenclature all these points so this is p1 if you see this is x axis and this polar angle wise if you go that means this is p1 this is p2 this is p3 like that all points you are naming them based on just on the polar angle only nothing else okay this is second point is it clear or not the polar angle wise immediately all points have to be named we have named it already okay the x axis this is y axis now what is happening p0 you have chosen now okay so this is now another another interesting thing is that remaining points in q counted by polar angle in order, uh, order around p0 if more than one point has the same angle remove all but the farthest one that means let's say p0 you have chosen and then you are going to choose polar angle wise p1 so your second point is this one correct na what it says let's say another point is there which is of the same angle that means this angle only let's say this is 30 degree the same angle another and the farthest point another point is there which is here let's say this is p1 this is p2 okay so p2 also having same 30 degree angle only right in this case what you have another point maybe here p3 what it says that you have to choose the farthest from p0 that means which one will be chosen p3 will be chosen very good this is another case when the polar angles are same you have to choose p3 very good second point also you understood so that's why okay, so first is p0 this is chosen second p2 p1 is chosen no issue next polar angle wise you have p2 because next point so immediately after start or starting of the algorithm three points immediately has to be chosen p p0 p1 or wherever p2 is Okay, so these three points are chosen. Okay. Correct. Fourth point when you will choose, which is nothing but P0, P1, P0, P1, P2, fourth point is P3. What you have to do first, you have to push all these three initial points P0, P1, P2. You have to push in a stack. So push it here P0, P1, P2. Immediately three points are pushed inside the stack. Now once P3 comes, P3 means this one, once P3 comes, you have to check the rotations, rotations means which rotations you have to check, which rotations, Lep left hand side or right hand side rotation, okay, so you have pushed these three, P1, P0, P1, P2 here, P0, P0, P1, P2, P2, and then point number three comes, which is nothing but P3, while the angle formed by the next to top, next to top is this one. This is top, top of the stack. This is next to top of the stack. And then the point that you have chosen, which is P3. That means situation is something like that. P2 is here. P3 is here. This is P3 already written. And then, okay, P2, P3. And then you have P1 here, right? Based on this, this figure only I'm talking. Correct, no friends? So this is your P1, this is your P2, this is your P3, this is your P3 here, P1, P3, P3 is here, P2 is here, P1 is here, so something like that. So initially it is like this, now you have this. Correct, no? So just you have to check 
what type of rotation it is is this a right rotation after choosing p1 or is it a left rotation right rotation so right rotation means non left turn is called right you know non decreasing is nothing but increasing why so no why not no on no 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 don't non decreasing mean increasing why why we not say normally increasing we say non decreasing also meaning why we say non decreasing because two points might be having same that's why to be in the generic we are writing it okay so this is right 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 turn is happening non left turn if it is a non left turn then what it would do pop s pop s that means what is there in the until now what is you have pushed p0 you have pushed p1 you have pushed p2 now you have, you have chosen p3 so it is a right turn after choosing p3 is a right turn if it is the case then pop p2 pop ps always pop will happen on the top of the stack so you just simply pop it p2 will be popped once p2 is popped then what will happen so that means so this p2 is not included it has been popped now you have this you have connected this correct now now you choose then this is a for uh, this 7 to 8 only going this 7 to 8 now you are choosing the next one which is nothing but which point p3 is address p4 so p4 you are choosing so this is uh, the i value is p4 so this is like this okay so this is p4 that means what you have p3 here and you have p4 here okay and then you have p1 here so this is something like this, this p1 and p3 then p4 correct no what type of rotation it is left rotation left non right rotation non right is left if it is the case it's not it's a left rotation it's not right so this is right so if this is the case then what you do to push pis that means the point that you have chosen which is nothing but p4 you have to push p4 okay push it am i doing correct or not one second one second hmm? Now P4 is there, no? P4, P4 is left. If P4 is left, which is not a right rotation, then you then you push it. So this is this will be false, it will come here. Push uh, this thing. So you push it. For well, which one I should I, I have P3, right? So I'll be pushing or PI, correct. So then I have my, my stack will be like this. One second, one second. One second. Pop S, we have pop S. No, when uh, find the angle formed by the next, yeah, it makes it pop S. We have popped this, okay, no problem. So, when it will come out, when this pop happens here, that means, okay, then, then next time. I have given to ma'am. So this is P3. 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 P0, P1, P2 is there. Then P3. Oh, P0, P1. P0, P1, P2 is there. Then I got P3, right? So then, then P2 has been popped. So I have P3 now. Ah. Huh. One second, one second. So now what will happen? After P3, uh, this has been popped. That means P2 has been popped. Then it will come in line number uh, 9 or it will go there again? It will, huh? Line number 10, no. That means push PS. That means P3 will be popped. P3 will be pushed here, right? P3 will be pushed here. So once P3 is pushed, that's all. Then again, I will take P4 now. Now P4 is in my hand, right? So now P4, so this is left turn. Once it is left turn, you again push P4 here. P0, P1, P3, 
थ्री फोर करेक्ट स्टूडेंट्स तो दिस इज तो पी फोर यू आर पुस्ट ओके तो दिस इज लाइक द सिचुएशन यू हैव हियर तो दिस इज पी फोर दैट मीन्स दिस इज द सिचुएशन करेक्ट ओनली पी टू हैज बीन पॉप डाउन नथिंग हैपन नाउ यू हैव पी फाइव तो बेसिकली यू हैव पी फोर हियर एंड यू हैव पी फाइव हियर तो दिस इज ए दिस इज लाइक एंड देन यू हैव हियर पी थ्री इट्स ए राइट टर्न राइट टर्न मीन्स यू पॉप या पॉप P4, pop P4, you have P5 with you. Then with P5, now 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 it is not over, students. You have to keep uh, running this loop, okay? Now, now you have P5 here. With P5 and P3, what is the rotation? Left, push P5. P0, P1, P2, P0, P1, P3. then p5 correct then you take p6 p6 again what type of rotation left push p6 then p7 push p7 then p8 push p8 okay then p8 suddenly this p9 came which is the right rotation correct or not so then you pop pop ph p9 you are popping ph this popped that means what that means your p8 this point has been popped with p7 and this what type of rotation it is again right rotation see here so p8 you have popped okay so p9 and p7 so p9 so this is like this what type of rotation it is right rotation this also will be popped that means your p7 also will be popped p7 also gone then you have p6 p6 is this and then you have p9 this this is the left rotation i think you push p9 p6 gone now you push p9 here now you have p10 So this P ten. So initially you have this, and then your right rotation P ten. That means P nine pop P nine. P nine is popped or not? Pop P nine. Then if you see carefully, you have you have pop P nine, and then what about with uh, P eight already uh, popped? What about P seven and P ten? Which type of rotation? Right. Pop P seven P nine uh, yeah pop what which one will be popped P nine is popped P seven P seven and P ten P seven P seven will be popped and then P six also will be popped yes or no P six also will be popped because it is like this right rotation. P six also pop. Then what about P five? P five and this one. P five is this, and P ten is this. Again, it is right rotation. P five also pop, right? But then this will remain. This is this, and this is left rotation. So push P nine, P ten, push P ten. That means up until. Until this much will be all popped. Only P3 will be left here. After P3, you have P10. So P10 of this. That means in the in the stack you will be having P0, P1, P3, P10. After P10, you have P11. What type of rotation it is? Left push P11. After P11, you have P12. Right rotation. Pop this. Pop P11. And then. That's all. These are the final thing, and then finally it is it will be connected to the origin. So that means in the origin you will be having. If you see it correctly, your origin will be having P zero, P one, P three, P zero, P one, P three, P ten. 
P12. Basically, I should write it correctly. P0, Q1, P, how much is man? P10. P3, then P10, and then finally, you will be having P12. This is the participating vertices which creates the convex hull. Correct? Now we see that So the next algorithm which is very simple is called Jarvis March. Jarvis March algorithm is very simple. What you have to do? Again, you, you select the polar P0 and then based on the polar angle, you just choose it will go anti clockwise so whichever whichever the points minimum polar angle you will get you will find them and fix them and name them like take the polar angle this okay then you come here again you take a polar angle first point that you are getting okay from here again you are getting this one here again you are getting this is Jarvis March. This also finds the convex hull. Same thing like uh, gram scan. Gram scan, we have the rotation thing. Here, the rotation thing is on. Students, stop seeing mobile phones. Okay, remove it from it. So this is Jarvis March. What it says, Jarvis March. Jarvis March computes the convex hull of set of Q finds by by a technique known package wrapping or gift wrapping. Okay. So here the running time is O N H, where H is the number of vertices. When H is O N log N, Jarvis March is asymptotically faster. How it works? We start with P0, this one. Figure 39.3 shows as next what is P1. The convex hull has the smallest polar angle. Smallest polar angle wise, you have to go. If you, if you start from here, you have to check which next point has the smallest polar angle. Okay. P1 has the smallest polar angle, we have to pick that. So you will go to P1 and then again you have to check which is having the smallest polar angle. That means you go anti-clockwise. So this angle is the smallest polar angle. Then from here, this point has the smallest polar angle. Here, this point has the smallest polar angle. That you will and I'll connect them. Then you will get the convex hull. Okay, this is Jarvis March. So Jarvis March is the easiest algorithm. Okay. Is it clear or not? Any doubt? Any? Just points will be given to you. This kind of points will be given to you. What you have to do? You have to first find P0. Then just go with the polar angle wise. It will be your next point. Let's say this and this is there. So here it will be your next point. From here it will be your next point. From here it will be your next point. Here it will be your next point. That's all. Called Jarvis March. Okay, so your computation of geometry, these three algorithms only there. Line. The ordering among line segments at various 
article three times you have a and c that means this line a and this line c so r is the sweep line so with the r we have a that means these two lines have been intersected by this line r so this concept is called sweep line just remember sweep line concept like in if you take this segment c and b then 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 t and u are the sweep lines which has crossed both the both the segments uh, b and c okay so sweep line concept just remember this terminology sweep 